I am fired up and I am ready to go. What's up, what's up, what's up everyone? It is Jason Janai and in this video, I wanna share with you five things that you can do to connect better with the people that are sitting in front of you looking to hire you or your entertainment business for their upcoming event or celebration. This video is all about building solid connections and things that you can do to do better with the sales and landing opportunities when they're in front of you. Everyone in the event industry has a different style, a different type of company. They do different things. Everyone has a different business, a different vibe. I get it. Everyone understands that. And at a very, very high level, we all kind of do the same thing. Although it's very different when you get into the nitty gritty, I wanted to boil down some thoughts on five things I think anyone can do anywhere in this industry to help them connect with the people, the organizations, the companies, the decision makers that are considering hiring them for their entertainment needs for whatever event they have in the future. And I hope you find a lot of value in this video. So I want to kind of kick this thing off in no specific order. And I want to start with kind of kind of a fundamental principle that I think really, really matters. And that is preparation. And I think having a plan when meeting with people is super, super important. I think being prepared is one of the biggest things that anyone could do with sales and successfully doing sales. And the more and better prepared you are, I think the better you will be and the higher the odds are of you landing that opportunity will be. So what can you do to kind of stack the deck in your favor? Well, I would start with, think about the questions you typically get asked. And I would think about trying to twist those answers into the staging of your conversation right from the beginning. Try to intertwine some of the answers into things that you're gonna talk about so that you're answering questions before they're even asked. I think another thing you can do is have images or videos available of you in action, especially if they dial into some questions that you typically get asked. And I think that is a big win and having them available and ready to go, ready to share with people is powerful. Information and knowledge is power. I also think that having a, a guided kind of process is super important. I know for me, I like to talk a little bit about their needs, a little bit about them. I try to open up the conversation, getting them to talk. Then I go into a little bit of myself, a little bit about the company, how we operate. I then go into services that could in fact matter for their celebration, I talk about business and talk about the next steps. That's my high level process, but it's adapted each and every time I talk with someone. And I wanna get into that in just a second. I think if you put this in play, you will enjoy it. It will become second nature for you and it will help you in kind of closing opportunities when they're sitting in front of you. Having a plan is really, really big. And that right there is number one. Number two is about making it personal. And you need to stop using a one size fits all approach to your meetings, even if they are the same type of event. Everyone wants to have a fun celebration. We get it. Everyone wants to have a fun party. We get it. Everyone has a different vision in mind for their upcoming celebration. We get it. Fun means different things to different people. So it is super, super, super important that you try not to force the round peg into the square hole with your process and the way you are talking to people. I think it is important to be personal and to be flexible and to be accommodating and to be open to doing things differently. I wanna use this analogy to kind of summarize this. Think of it this way. If you're talking to a 25 year old couple that's never planned a wedding before in their lives, that everything is super overwhelming to them, that's one thing. You're gonna to talk to that couple very different than a couple that might be in their late 40s that already have kids, they've already been married and they're getting remarried. Um, you're gonna to talk to them very different as well. And if you wanna continue the conversation, think about it this way. You're gonna to talk to both of those sets of people or clients differently than you would be talking to a parent that's planning their sweet 16 for their daughter. You need to know your audience and you need to be able to adapt accordingly and make it personal as possible. Number three is kind of like a general rule for me and I've talked about this for years in different ways and even here on YouTube, but it's really about shutting up and listen more. A lot of DJs like to talk, I get it, me too, right? But it is super important that once you establish that conversation and the conversation starts moving, that you allow the people that are in front of you to talk. It's important that you stop what you're doing 
and you listen with intent of what they are saying. Allow the people in front of you to speak. Allow them to share. Allow them to storytell. Allow them to elaborate on whatever it is they have in mind for this upcoming celebration that they are planning. And I think it is so important that you need to listen. Like legit, really, 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 really listen. And even take notes if you're not really good at remembering things. Know your role and listen to what they're telling you because if you take the time to listen, I guarantee you, you will find the secret sauce recipe for what they are looking for out of the experience. They're gonna tell you essentially what they're looking for out of the experience that you can help them with. And I think if you're able to listen, you're able to comprehend, you will be able to kind of steer the conversation in a way that kind of hits the sweet spot for them in the future. Number four, it's all about having the right setup, the right tech, and the right environment around you. And just because we're still crawling out of this global pandemic, it doesn't mean that your business needs to stop. You as a DJ need to think, you need to be creative, and you need to kind of work through what you can do to operate your business underneath the circumstances of the world around you. And if you're not able to meet with people in person for whatever reason, think outside of what the past was and think of how you can use the tools that are available to you to slam dunk these meetings, even if they are virtual. Think of um, the processes of how you like to do things in the past and try to find tools to allow you to conduct business and to build from there in the same way. I use tools like Zoom and Ecamm and um, I use a series of, of cameras and lighting and, and microphones so that the tech side of my meetings and my, um, my virtual sessions and whatever are super professional looking and they look really good. And by the way, I have a series of videos on the tech side of doing virtual meetings on my personal YouTube channel, and I'd love to invite you to check them all out if you'd like to get further into this kind of topic and kind of get into the rabbit hole. But from staging to lighting to software to kind of cleaning up your office, I offer a ton of stuff on YouTube, and I think it is an important part of kind of business these days. I think investing in the tech, investing time and energy into determining what systems work best with the way that you do things will only set yourself up for success. And just because you have to kind of work within the framework of this pandemic and all the rules that surround it doesn't mean your business has to stop. That's the point here. So invest in tech, do your homework and find tools to help you kind of give your message and deliver the message of your service, your brand, and all the things that you can do in a way that works for you and is easy for someone else to follow. And I promise it will only add to awesomeness in the future for you. Number five is all about the follow-up and doing whatever it is that you promise, right? So it is super important that you operate your business and you do whatever it is that you say you're going to do because there's nothing worse for someone trying to plan or organize an event to be waiting for information and then to essentially get frustrated and then go find someone else that's willing to give them the information when they're looking for it. Think about the process from the other side of this kind of conversation. Someone that's planning an event today of any kind can be exhausting. I mean, it's really exhausting to plan an event, especially for a lot of people that don't do this all the time. There's a lot of decisions to make. There's a lot of things to kind of think through and everything costs so much money. And depending on the age of the people that you're working with, depending on the type of event that they're planning with you, and um, depending on if entertainment is a priority or not, regardless of where they sit in the social spectrum or the economic kind of demographic of the world in the United States or wherever you're watching this, regardless of what they do for work, it is super important that you do what you say you're going to do as a professional, as someone in the business. And if you are always kind of someone that is on time and prompt, I guarantee it helps your business more than you know. If you're someone that takes a while to send out an email or you forget to follow up, or maybe you're not super respectful and professional, that could hurt your business 
tremendously. I'll be candid with you. I hate following up with people. I hate kind of following up after sales. I hate bothering people. I don't like when it's done to me. So therefore I kind of translate that and I apply it to my world where I don't like to bother people. I tell people when I meet with them that I'm not going to be bothering them every single day. I'm going to send them an email with information at the conclusion of our meeting and I'll probably follow up with them again in two weeks just to see if they need anything else. That's my process. Some people watching this need to follow up every single day. They're going to text them. They're going to call them. They're going to do that. If you're going to do that, make sure you let them know that you're going to be doing that and allow them the opportunity of telling you what they need. Okay, we're not going to be able to look at this for another week. So don't bother calling me until next week. I think... um, That's really, really key here. I think following up and being professional, being respectful is a big part of business and it is super important that you always operate your business in a professional manner. Hopefully you help, hopefully, now hopefully you found some value in these tips for you in the sales process and I hope that you continue to crush business in the future. So that's it guys, five things that you can do to kind of increase the odds of building relationships with the people and closing sales for you and your entertainment business moving forward. My name is Jason Janai and I appreciate you taking the time to stick with me to the end of this video. If you have a question, you need anything at all, throw it in the comments down below and I'll do my best to respond to every single person that takes the time to drip a comment down below. Be on the lookout for more content dripping right here on this channel in the days, weeks, and months ahead and I hope you enjoyed it.